Okay, the last thing to say about the motor systems in the brain uh, is about the cerebellum. So the cerebellum is this big structure that sits in the uh, on the, the dorsal side of the hind brain, um, uh, right above the the fourth ventricle. Uh, apart from the cerebral cortex, it's the the largest part of the brain you can kind of see from the outside. Um, and in fact, the word cerebellum means little brain or little cerebrum, cerebrum because uh, in addition to its size, it has some things in common with the cerebral cortex. Uh, one is, you know, from the outside, you can see it has lots of little bumps and grooves on it, um, but uh, in the cerebellum, we call them folia. Uh, and it also has two hemispheres, so a, a kind of left and right side, but unlike the cerebral cortex, it doesn't really have a clear central fissure. Um, instead, there's this bump along the middle called the vermis. Um, but it, again, it is uh, one of the biggest parts of the, of the brain. Also has, uh, like the cerebral cortex, a layered uh, structure. So in fact, uh, in, in cross-section, you can see this part of the cerebellum is called the cerebellar cortex. Um, so you have layer, uh, neurons packed in tight layers um, and very densely packed too. In fact, uh, even though the cerebellum takes up less than 25% uh, of the brain volume, it actually contains more than 50% of the neurons in the brain. So the neuron cell bodies of uh, the cerebellum are really tightly packed in these, in these layers. And it also has, in addition to the cerebellar cortex, there are some deep cerebellar nuclei that lie ventral to, to the cerebellar cortex. Um, and then again, the fourth ventricle kind of divides the cerebellum from the pons. And so that's where, where this, the cerebellum is located. Um, most of the inputs and outputs to the cerebellum go through these um, deep cerebellar nuclei, but then most of the sort of processing that the cerebellum does goes through the cerebellar uh, cortex. So again, like with the, the basal nuclei, um, to kind of understand what the cerebellum does, um, it helps to look at what happens when it's damaged. Um, so when uh, cerebellar lesions damage to the cerebellum are associated with, uh, again, mostly movement disorders, including ataxia. Um, so ataxia uh, just means uh, uncoordinated, uncoordinated and inaccurate movements. Um, dyssynergia, uh, which means decomposition of uh, normally synergistic multi-joint movements. So what that means is uh, any movement, um, even simple movements, are multi-joint movements. So even something as simple as you know reaching out and picking up something from your desk requires multiple joints. You know you have to uh, move your elbow, your wrist, your shoulder, um, all in a a synergistic way, meaning that they all have to sort of uh, cooperate with each other. The muscle contractions have to occur in the right sequence. Um, and uh, that all happens normally without any uh, effort on your part. So you don't really have to think about each individual movement when you do, uh, when you try to, uh, again, pick up an object or uh, move a, a, a toward a goal. So uh, people with cerebellar damage, uh, they'll have trouble with these kinds of movements. So instead of making nice, smooth motions, um, their motions are, are uh, decomposed, meaning that each individual mo movement has to be sort of controlled independently. So um, their movement is, tends to be sort of jerky and slow. Um, and then dysmetria, which is um, any difficulty in moving toward a target. So someone with, with uh, dysmetria, uh, if you ask them to reach out and touch something or point at something, they have difficulty um, uh, hitting a target. Um, and then uh, over here, this is again another video of someone with these symptoms.
So uh, what you saw there is, again, he had trouble um, pointing toward uh, his own nose or, or reaching out and pointing at an object in space, um, but only with one side. So this is someone who had, uh, this isn't a degenerative condition. This is someone who had uh, a brain injury uh, and it only affected one side of the brain. So, or one side of the cerebellum, the other side was still intact. So um, he could still control the, the right hand uh, pretty easily, but the left hand, he had a lot of trouble um, uh, pointing and, and uh, controlling that movement. Um, and although you notice he got better at it, so again, as, as he practiced uh, and did the same movement over and over again, um, he was able to control it more. Uh, you know, perhaps that means that there was less control by the cerebellum, uh, and he was using more of the the higher like uh, motor cortex motor cortex uh, regions to to control uh, those muscles. So so again, that's kind of the job of the cerebellum is to to control those uh, multi joint movements in a way that doesn't require the motor cortex to send commands to every individual uh, muscle. So uh, so the idea is, and then and then another. Uh, so this just kind of shows the the how the cerebellum is connected to the motor cortex. Uh, it sort of forms another loop. So uh, again, the motor cortex, or I mean the cerebral cortex, uh, communicates or sends uh, an excitatory signal to the cerebellum via the these pontine nuclei. So the the pons, remember, is the structure below the cerebellum. So these pontine nuclei get their input from the cerebral cortex. Oops. And then uh, that the ponti nuclei communicate with the cerebellum itself, uh, again through the the deep cerebellar nuclei. And then the cerebellum has output that goes out back to the thalamus again. So this is another division of the ventral lateral nucleus of the thalamus, the same structure that gets input from the basal nuclei. But these neurons then send uh, their inputs back to motor cortex specifically to area four. So the the model that we have here is that when uh, the the brain wants to, uh, when the, the frontal cortex has decided to initiate a complex multi-joint movement, rather than send uh, a command to move, move each individual muscle through motor cortex, it sends a signal to the cerebellum that has a sort of pre-programmed set of commands that then automatically goes back to the motor cortex to initiate or to carry out that movement. Um, so uh, the other thing that the cerebellum is involved in is um, is memory. So again, if, if the idea is that the cere cerebellum's job is to coordinate these complex uh, movements or movements that require a, a complex uh, uh, sequence of muscle contractions. Um, the other job of the cerebellum must be involving motor learning because, uh, you know, of course, the first time you carry out a movement, um, it's always going to require uh, individual control of each muscle. And this is, in fact, uh, how uh, we learn to move is when you're when you're a baby and you're first learning to move and to, to do things like walk and, and crawl. Uh, your your brain is essentially having to control each muscle by itself. Um, but the, the idea is that there's feedback coming from the muscle and from your body uh, comparing sort of what you intended to do versus what actually happened. So uh, the idea is that. Uh, as you repeat a, an emotion or an attempted movement, uh, if the intended outcome matched the uh, expected outcome, I mean the actual outcome, then the the brain, uh, including the cerebellum, uh, takes that information and sort of reinforces those circuits that produced the desired uh, outcome. And so uh, over time, uh, essentially you you learn, uh, movements simply by those circuits becoming more and more deeply ingrained and then they eventually get sort of stored in the cerebellum um, and then later when you need to carry out one of those movements the command can go straight to the cerebellum which then sends that uh, pattern of activity toward the cortex to carry it out um, and this again is a model for how we we learn uh, any kind of motor task um, now this is different from learning and memory involving what we call explicit memory. Um, later on, hopefully, we'll talk about uh, memory in more detail. Um, 
and uh, uh, this kind of memory that involves uh, learning of, of motor behavior um, is, is a special kind of memory um, and it specifically refers to these kinds of uh, uh, motor uh, functions but um, this is just one mechanism for uh, learning. All right, so that is all we need to say about the motor systems for now. So thanks again for listening.